Welcome back. The Big Five Construct Southern Africa event wrapped up yesterday. The event, now in its 10th year, highlighted progress and transformation within the construction sector, taking in the knowledge and solutions from industry professionals. Job creation and investing in women-owned businesses and moving with the digital age were also discussed. To give us more detail, I'm now joined by Tracy Lee Bo from DMG Events. Uh, Tracy Lee, can you tell us how this event uh, contributes to economic growth and transformation of the construction sector? Absolutely. The Big Five Construct Southern Africa is really the largest event in the region and it remains a significant contributor to economic growth. And how we do this is we create a platform of open engagement and we accelerate business through face-to-face -face networking. This year saw over 250 exhibitors in participation and we have seen international pavilions come back to our event from across the globe. And we've had over 45 countries participating in our event. Um, so the whole value chain is really represented on the floor and we've had something for everyone. Um, we had the Stakeholders Engagement Forum, which was led by the newly appointed Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Mr. Sikalala, and key stakeholders who really looked at the challenges that we are currently facing within our industry and looking forward to the rejuvenation of it as well. We were co-located by the African Smart Cities as well as the Construction Impact Awards, where we celebrated the innovation within the sector as we move forward and work together to shape a prosperous future for our communities and nations. Tracy Lee, we've been talking about the construction mafia recently on the news with some shocking figures uh, on what it's costing the economy. How's the industry approached the issue at this conference? I'm sure it must have been one of the key talking points. You see, the impact that it has had on the industry is quite difficult to pinpoint exactly, but we are talking in the millions. Um, the misconception by um, the mafia is that there is a lot of money in construction, when actually in reality, the kind of margins we're looking at is about 2.2. So, um, you know, there's this misconception and it's not further from the truth, but extortionist rackets is not really unique to South Africa. It's a systemic pro um, issue that we are affected by, but it's compounded in South Africa by the lack of effective policing, prosecution, and then, um, you know, consistent messaging. But now it's kind of infiltrated across all industries. We're looking at built environments, infrastructure, we're looking at roads and energy. So it is a problem which we are looking at, but there are also solutions that have been covered in our, in our um, addresses as well. Always good we when see, there are problems we, we, to hear solutions as well. I, I do apologize for interrupting you there. <laughs> No problem. No problem. You see, the thing is, you know, there is you have to look at the problems and then the solutions. So what we do as an event uh, platform is we, we, we discuss the kind of challenges they are. And we had um, Weber Wenzel and we had um, uh, one of the partners come and just talk to us about the effects that this has had on the industry. And, you know, we are doing different remedies like doing interdicts and criminal sanctions and site security and looking at insurance policies, etc. But really, prevention is better than cure. And I feel that a lot of it is, um, you know, I've had people come up to me um, during the show and say, you know, we're talking about construction mafia, but do we really understand the grassroots level of it? Mm. You know, the people on the street and the people who are involved in it often are only trying to put some food on the table. <clears throat> so we really have to look at working together and better stakeholder engagement and really giving people social license to operate and offering the people in the surrounding communities of those projects real opportunities to put bread on the table, as I said. We can look at risk management as well, and obviously increasing our ESG components as we move forward. But it really is, it is a problem that we need to look at. And, and I'm glad to say that there are many, many initiatives that are looking at um, a sustainable progress in this, in this regard. Another issue frequently in the news is uh, construction projects, especially of uh, national infrastructure projects that are abandoned, stalled, uncompleted, um, for various reasons, corruption being foremost among them. Uh, where does the industry stand on increasing professionalism in its ranks, along with fighting corruption and improving uh, tender and job completion processes? So you see, this this is also what we, we speak about in terms of smart cities, you know. Um, yes, we do have problems. We all know that that's, that is, is prevalent in terms of on a, on a ground 
uh, a roots level, we are looking at delays in projects because of um, municipal delays, processes that are, so it has a huge impact on it. So we're looking at saying, okay, at our, at our conference, we look, look at African smart cities and say, how are we ready to, to make Africa smart? We need to look if smart cities are actually really a um, priority for us as a Southern African nation. And the point is we can't look at smart cities as being these kind of pie in the sky, um, throw money at it and we have these beautiful smart cities and then it doesn't, it doesn't enter grassroots. We need to look at how we are changing the, the, at a municipal level, at a grassroots level, trying to make an impact for our, our citizens as such. So the only way to move forward with that is, is, is offering smart solutions and innovations on the current infrastructure, not trying to revolutionize how we do things, but actually look at how we're doing things currently and how we are making it better in order to serve our communities better. So when you talk about those smart cities, um, are we realizing those dreams yet? Because we've been hearing about them for a while, uh, but, but you know, we're not seeing them everywhere yet. And, and many of South Africa's residents are not reaping the benefits of those smart cities. And I think that's just what I've spoken about. You know, I think we look at um, developments within the world and we look at them and we say, wow, you know, these are fantastic. But whether they are integrated into the community, that's really the the crux of the success of them, because if they are not touching the man on the street, if the citizens are not feeling the fact that there are more smart processes, we can look all over the world and we can look at, you know, Singapore and, and whatever country, and we see how fantastic the citizens are just able to get driver's licenses and, you know, um, get plans approved. We need to look at home. So, you know, the DBSA, as well as the World Bank, have actually started these initiatives where they... Um, are um, joining with metros to actually look at how their processes are, are being dealt with and actually working with these metros to make in those improvements to ensure that the citizens on the ground are actually feeling those things, you know. The smarter city is actually hitting the man on the street, and that's what we want. That's what a smart city is. A smart city is able to make our citizens work efficiently, travel efficiently, and do things easier and more efficient. Sounds like a future we all can't wait to, to, to live in right now. Thank you very much, uh, Tracy Lieber from DMG Events, telling us a little bit more about the uh, Big Five Construct Southern Africa event, which wrapped up yesterday.